This video shares a few helpful tips on getting started with Sketchbook Pro on Windows or Mac. When the app launches, the main window always opens full screen to give you the maximum drawing area. When I zoom out, you can see the default canvas has the same size and ratio as the window. To customize the size, go to the image menu and use image size. Enter your desired width, height, and resolution. You can also customize the default size in the preferences. In the canvas tab, you'll find an option to use window size. Uncheck this box and you'll be able to enter your own values. Once saved, every time you launch the app or make a new file, your preferred canvas size will be used. To navigate, there's a widget in the toolbar that lets you pan, zoom, and rotate the canvas. While you're drawing, you can activate this widget by holding the spacebar. The widget conveniently appears under your pen, allowing you to reposition your view easily. If you have a tablet that supports touch input, you can also use two fingers to navigate. The brush palette is for storing your most used brushes. The default set includes a good sample of the brush types available in Sketchbook. Sketchbook brushes let you achieve a wide variety of styles, textures, and effects. Erasers are a brush type, so you can store multiple erasers to produce different results. In addition to brushes that add or erase paint, others blend or smudge what's already on the canvas. To see all the brush sets loaded in Sketchbook Pro, tap on the library icon. You can select brushes directly from the library, but this is also where you manage your brushes. To move a brush from one set to another, just tap hold and drag and drop. This is how you organize and reorder your brush sets. Tapping on this circular icon activates a radial menu. This is called a marking menu, and it lets you select more options. To copy the current brush, I just need to gesture in the direction of the command. To customize this duplicate, double tap opens the brush properties window. There is a basic tab that shows primary properties, and the advanced tab shows all the settings that define how a brush looks. This is also where you can rename brushes. When you're drawing, you can make basic brush changes without any of these windows open. When you press the B hotkey, dragging on screen will change brush size. The O hotkey changes opacity. You can also use the brush puck to do the same changes without hotkeys. Tapping and dragging left and right in the widget changes size. Up and down changes opacity. There are a few ways to change color. The color editor is located in the toolbar. There is a color wheel with a ring for changing hue and a diamond for changing saturation and luminance. Below, you can see the hex values update dynamically. You can also adjust color by entering values or using the sliders in the HSL, HSV, or RGB tabs. There is a tab for random color. When this is selected, you can define how colors randomize. One option is to use HSL sliders to set the amount of randomization. Now, every stroke I make applies a different color within that defined range. Next, let's take a look at custom colors. The first tab lets you create and store color palettes. Each set can have up to 12 palettes. Customize by dragging and dropping the color chip to the palette. The library icon opens a page where you can manage and create new color sets. Just tap on the plus icon and you can start making new palettes. The next tab is for images. This is where you can import your own photos and image files to sample color. You can load up to 12 images. To pick a color, just tap anywhere on the image or you can tap drag. Similar to the brush puck, there is a color puck. Dragging left and right changes the saturation of the active color. Dragging up and down changes the luminance. If you do a single tap, 
a mini color wheel opens temporarily to let you make a big color shift without cluttering the screen. Now let's take a look at layers. Every layer stack in Sketchbook always has a background. Tapping the visibility icon will toggle the background off and on. This is how you export transparent images. Tapping on the color swatch lets you use color windows to change the background color. Once you've picked a color, tap on the swatch again or pick a brush to reset the color windows. Each layer has a visibility icon to toggle the contents. There is a vertical slider to adjust opacity. The center part of a layer is reserved for marking menus. This is where you access all the primary layer actions. Once you get familiar with the positions of each action, you don't need to wait for the icons to appear. Just simply tap and flick in the direction of the command. Layers are how you build up and organize artwork. To reorder your layer, use the handle icon on the top right to drag a layer to a new position. The next icon is Lock Transparency. When this is activated, any paint you add to this layer will only apply to areas that already have paint on it. The next icon is for making a layer into a clipping mask. We'll use the same layer as our base for the effect, and I'll create a new layer above it. Once I activate the clipping mask icon, the layer is now linked to the base layer and uses its transparency as a mask. I can draw anywhere on the layer, but we will only see the paint that overlaps with visible paint on the layer below. This is a really effective method for masking that gives you flexibility to make changes. To demonstrate this, let's take a look at a few transform features in the toolbar. The Quick Transform tool is a fast way to reposition content on a layer. The tool prompts to make a selection and then automatically opens a widget to move, rotate, or scale. While the tool is active, all clipping content is temporarily made visible. Once a new position is accepted, the clip is then reapplied. The toolbar also includes traditional select and transform tools. These are more robust than quick transform, providing more control. For clipping mask layers, transform lets you dynamically move the content while seeing the clipped results. You can also use shift key to constrain the scale. There is also a distort option that lets you reshape the area using the corners or the bias handle in the middle. Last, I want to touch on the Lagoon. This is a prominent interface in Sketchbook Pro. The Lagoon is a customizable bar that gives six marking menus for accessing common commands with a flick of the pen. The first marking menu position is important because it stores useful view controls. This is where you can quickly toggle the visibility of all the UI elements. You can also toggle just the lagoon. For left-handed users, this is where the lagoon can be placed on the other side of the screen. This wraps up this video. I hope these tips are helpful as you explore Sketchbook Pro. Thanks for watching and happy drawing.